So I'm Matt Rothschild. I'm the executive director of the Wisconsin Democracy came, Campaign here in Madison. We're about 23 years old. Uh, our goal, what we do is we track and expose money in politics and we advocate for a full democracy where everyone has an equal voice. And I think it may be intuitively clear to all of you that not everyone in the United States, not everyone in Wisconsin has an equal voice. It depends on how much money you got in the bank. And so that's what we try to do. We try to see who is giving money to candidates, who is advertising on TV with these so-called issue advocacy ads that splatter mud on your screens all day long on the two weeks before the election or three weeks before the election. We try to find out who's paying for that mud and we put it all on our website. Our website is wisdc.org, wisdc.org. I want to thank you for coming today on the first nice day out of 50. Uh, I'm sure you had better options than being here, but it's just nice to see the sun out. So what I want to, uh, you know, the title of my talk here is very subtle. You know, Wisconsin's campaign finance system is a joke. So I want to talk about why it's a joke. I also want to talk about the national structure that has given wealthy individuals and corporations much more of a say than you and I and your parents and who gets elected and who the candidates are, what the laws are, what policies are pursued. Jimmy Carter, former president, said a couple years ago on Progressive Radio with Tom Hartman that we no longer have a democracy in this country, that we have an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery. And that's what we do at the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign. We try to expose and track that political bribery. Part of the problem is, uh, Wisconsin, uh, is U.S. Supreme Court decisions over the the last 140 years. You probably have heard of the Citizens United decision in 2010. The Citizens United decision at the US Supreme Court in 2010 said that corporations and other groups can dip into their treasury and spend as much money as they want to try to elect this candidate or to try to trash that candidate. Uh, there had been laws on the books in many states, including in Wisconsin, for more than 100 years that prohibited corporations from spending like that uh, in elections. So there's this whole campaign to overturn Citizens United. But I want to tell you that Citizens, when you hear Citizens United, that is just shorthand. It's shorthand for 140 years of bad decisions from the US Supreme Court that magically turned corporations into persons and money into speech and have allowed uh, big business and the super wealthy to throw their weight around. I mean, it goes all the way back to 1886 in a U.S. Supreme Court decision called uh, Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad, uh, where the U.S. Supreme Court, though not a U.S. Supreme Court justice, uh, said that corporations are persons. How did that happen? Well, a, an employee of the U.S. Supreme Court, not one of the justices, summarized the decision, put a head note, not a footnote, but a head note on the decision that said corporations are persons. And ever since then, future U.S. Supreme Courts have said, well, their precedent was set back in 1886, so we've got to continue to rule that corporations are persons. So that's how the whole thing started. And then let's fast forward to 1976. There was another decision, Buckley versus Vallejo, where the U.S. Supreme Court said money equals speech. And then you had a decision in 2007 that was Wisconsin Right to Life versus FEC. This is at the US Supreme Court that said these so-called issue advocacy groups can throw their money around right up to the election and run these ads that say, and you've seen them on your screen, you know, call Tammy Baldwin at 608 whatever and tell her to stop killing veterans up at Toma or whatever nasty, uh, slimy things they say. Uh, they're not saying don't vote for Tammy Baldwin explicitly or vote for her opponent, but that's the clear import of those ads. You know. Don't, you, don't even think about voting for Tammy Baldwin. But those are okay now, according to the US Supreme Court decision in that case. Then there was Citizens United in 2010, and then in 2014 there was a decision called McCutcheon. There was this wealthy guy in Alabama who'd spent already $110,000 in donations to political candidates and political parties, and he thought that his First Amendment rights were being infringed upon because he couldn't spend another $110,000 on other candidates. There was an aggregate limit under the McCain-Feingold bill that said you can't spend more than that, and the U.S. Supreme Court threw out that. So that's kind of the legal landscape. Uh, and then here in Wisconsin, things uh, were always, since I came on, and I've been here in Wisconsin for 35 years, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. My wife grew up in Janesville. Um, but since I got here, when I got here, Wisconsin was a clean place. Uh, and, you know, the joke was that a lobbyist would take out uh, a politician to 
lunch and buy that politician a drink and that that was somehow a big scandal. Well, we've had a lot of bigger scandals since then. We had a John Doe prosecutor investigating Scott Walker a few years ago for allegedly violating the law. And then the Wisconsin Supreme Court in 2015 threw out that investigation of Walker. Let me just describe what was going on. There was a statute on our books that said if you're a candidate, like Walker was, you can't coordinate with these outside, any outside groups uh, that are doing electioneering ads like the one I talked about with the fake Tammy Baldwin ad. Anyway, so Walker was doing that. This was during the recalls. He was going around the country uh, raising money from super rich businessmen, uh, including Mr. Menard or, or Diane Hendricks in Beloit or a uh, uh, lead manufacturer in Texas or Sheldon Adelson, the casino owner in Las Vegas who has spent about $123 million in political expenditures. Um, and so he was getting them to write checks not to Scott Walker's reelection campaign but to another group called the Wisconsin Club for Growth. So it looked like that was illegal. So there was a prosecutor investigating and the Wisconsin Supreme Court said that case is null and void because the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution prohibits the state of Wisconsin from banning coordination between candidates and outside so-called issue advocacy groups, even though the U.S. Supreme Court really has said nothing directly on that issue. So that was a bad decision that allowed this coordination to go on, because let me put it this way. If I'm running for governor uh, and I've got a billionaire friend, and the most my billionaire friend now can give me is $20,000, which I think is crazy. The limit used to be 10,000, now it's 20,000. Who can write checks for $20,000 except super rich people in Wisconsin? Rich and poor alike can write checks for $20,000 to your favorite candidate for governor in Wisconsin. Anyway, I'm gonna tell my friend, don't even write me the check for $20,000. I got a better idea, write a check for $2 million to this uh, cutesy named group in Wisconsin like Badgers for Eternal Victory. Write a check for $2 million to Bev and I'll go talk to Bev and tell them what ads to run and where to run them. And it'll just be like my billionaire friend gave me $2 million and not $20,000, 100 times the legal limit. So that's just a way around it. And the kicker is, Badgers for Eternal Victory, Bev doesn't have to disclose that my billionaire friend gave them a single dime. They don't have to disclose their donors. That's what's meant by dark money. Those outside groups that do these issue advocacy ads don't have to tell us who's paying for the mud. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a huge end around the limits in Wisconsin that are supposed to protect us from any super rich single individual having an undue influence over who gets elected and possibly getting something on the backside, getting some reward, getting a tax policy that they like, a tax break or a loan from WEDIC, the Wisconsin, you know, uh, whatever it's called, uh, what used to be the Commerce Department. And so uh, that's a problem. That came from the court. The next problem came in November of 2015. And I was at the Capitol, I was in the Senate gallery, it was the evening they were rewriting the campaign finance law. And it was just me, a uh, Capitol page, about a 22 year old young man in the Capitol and a Capitol police officer up in the gallery. Nobody, literally nobody else was there. And they were totally rewriting the campaign finance law. They threw out the nice lofty rhetoric about we need to protect our democracy from the undue influence of excessive money. We need disclosure and transparency. All that went out. And then substantively what they did was a number of horrible things. First, they did double the amount that you could give if you're a rich person to candidates you like. So from used to be $10,000 and now it's $20,000 for governor. And just think about how out of whack that is. You know how much money you can give if you're a rich person, you wanna support your favorite candidate for president of the United States? $2,700. Is being governor in Wisconsin seven times as important as being president of the United States? I mean, why should people be able to give $20,000 to their favorite candidate for governor and they can only give $2,700? $20,000 for governor, $2,700 for president. That doesn't make any sense it's when you look at, you know, who's got the more important job. So that was one thing. Here's another big thing they did. They allowed corporations for the first time in more than 100 years, as I said, to uh, donate to political parties in Wisconsin and donate to legislative campaign committees. There are these things, I never knew they existed, legislative campaign committees before I got to the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign. That means the person who was the majority leader in the State Assembly and the Speaker of the State Assembly, majority leader in the Senate, they run campaign committees. 
they're in charge of campaign committees. And so rich individuals can give unlimited amounts to them. Corporations can give $12,000 to them. And we've had like $1.3 million from corporations to political parties in Wisconsin since 2015. And some of those contributions are coming from pharmaceutical companies, healthcare companies, Philip Morris. You know, they're, give, they're throwing their money around. So that was another bad thing. It allowed coordination. It, in the statute, did exactly what the Wisconsin State Supreme Court did. Allowed coordination between candidates and outside issue advocacy groups and even out, outside so-called express advocacy groups. These are the groups that say, vote, literally say, vote for or vote against. And then they define coordination so tightly that it's almost impossible to convict anyone of coordinating, even with those express advocacy groups, because they said to prove coordination between a candidate and a group that says vote for or vote against, the candidate has to explicitly ask that outside group to do X. And that outside group has to explicitly assent to the ask. And you know how things can be done with a wink and a nod. You know, I could say if I'm running for governor to this outside group, hey, I've got an idea maybe you should consider. Maybe you should consider running this ad all over the state. And uh, I'll let you have it and you decide. And they say, sure, I'll decide. And you know, with, a, with an elbow here and a nudge there that the deal's been done without an explicit ask and without an explicit assent. So it just came to, kind of made a mockery of the whole system. And so right now, donations to political parties in Wisconsin uh, are unlimited. Before 2015, and before the McCutcheon decision at the US Supreme Court, no rich person in Wisconsin could give more than $10,000 to anybody. And if they gave $10,000 to their favorite candidate for governor, Jim Doyle, for instance, they couldn't give a single dime to someone running for state senate, or someone running for attorney general, or someone running for lieutenant governor, or someone running for secretary of state, or someone running for state assembly. $10,000 and, and you were done. So if you knew rich people, they, were, they had an expression in Wisconsin that, that, was, well, that was simply this, I've maxed out. Rich people, if they spent their $10,000 prior to 2015 and another candidate would come up to them, a lot of rich people were happy about the limit because they could just say, guess what? I love you, but I've maxed out. I can't give you any more because the law doesn't allow me to. Now the expression, I've maxed out, is extinct in Wisconsin because there's no way you can max out in Wisconsin if you're a super rich person who loves to spend money in politics because now, if you want to give money to your political party of choice, the Republican Party of Wisconsin or the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, you can write checks for a million dollars or more. And there are people writing checks for a million dollars to the Republican Party of Wisconsin and the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. Uh, the Republican Party of Wisconsin, uh, Diane Hendricks of Beloit, ABC Supply in Beloit, she's written checks for a million dollars to the Republican Party of Wisconsin. Marlene Ricketts, the co-owner of the Chicago Cubs, I don't know if they're Cub fans here, she has written a check for a million dollars to the uh, Republican Party of Wisconsin, even though she lives in Omaha, Nebraska. And then there's a liberal philanthrop philanthropist in Milwaukee who's written a check for a million dollars to the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. So you might say, well, there are rich people you know, on the conservative side, and there are rich people on the liberal side, and there's George Soros and Jim Steyer, and there's Sheldon Adelson nationally. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that our democracy is not supposed to be a tug of war between a couple billionaires on the left and a couple billionaires on the right. In a democracy, we're all supposed to have an equal tug on the rope, and it's just, it's so obviously clear to almost everyone in this country that we don't have an equal tug on the rope, um, that it's just kind of laughable. I mean, Donald Trump, not my favorite person, but Donald Trump during the uh, primaries, that first primary when Scott Walker was up there and all the other candidates were up there, he, was, he, he said, he was open about it. He said, you know, the system's rigged. It was a line he stole from Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, but, you know, he knows a good line when he steals it. The system's rigged. Uh, you know, when I call any of these guys uh, after I've given them checks, you know, they do what I want them to do. And the system's rigged. And everyone, you know, that resonated with people. I mean, Trump knows how to strike a chord with people because he knows people understand that the system's rigged. So he was playing that populist chord too, just as Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have been doing it. And people get that. I mean, I was looking today at a website I want to offer you, opensecrets.org. This is the national group that uh, covers money in politics. Uh, they have a study, one study after another, about you know, who are the richest contributors, which are the companies that give the most, which are the dark, so-called dark money groups. 
And then I saw an article in Mother Jones that said, O point, no, the 1%, the O point 1%, the richest O point 1% of Americans in 2014 uh, gave something like 40% of all the money in elections. Uh, so that, you know, this is a game that's played by the rich and by the corporations. And for the most part, you and I, and almost every citizen in Wisconsin, uh, have been reduced to the role of spectators in the political arena, except on election day. And sometimes we're blind, blindfolded spectators at that because we don't know where the money's coming from with this dark money group. And the only day of the whole year where we have as much power as Charles Koch or Sheldon Adelson or any of the or George Soros, Jim Steyer, whoever you want to say, is on election day. That's why I, I tell people to vote. I don't try to guilt people into voting. I know a lot of people do try to guilt people, guilt trip you into voting. You know, people have died for the right to vote. I get all that, and it's true, and it's a good reason to vote. But I don't think it's, I don't think you get far trying to guilt trip people into vote. Actually, I just think people should go vote because that's where you can flex your muscles. That's where you have as much power as the most wealthy person in the country on that given day, in that given moment, in that. Uh, voting booth. So uh, that's my pitch for voting. And you should try to vote on April 2nd, too. There's a big Wisconsin Supreme Court uh, race on April 2nd. Um, but yeah, we need to get to a point in this country where we have uh, a semblance of an equal voice. Everyone in this country should have an equal voice in a democracy. And there are ways to do that. I mean, you could re redistribute wealth and income so that everyone had roughly the same amount and then it, we wouldn't really need any laws regulating uh, who's spending what, because we all start with the same number of chips. But we're a long, long way from redistributing wealth and income in this country. Uh, a better way to, to start at this problem, uh, a lot of states are way ahead of us. A lot of states are requiring disclosure for people who give money to third party groups, these dark money groups. Any of these dark money groups that spend ads in the year of the election, they need to disclose who gives them $100 or more. And a lot of states have enacted that law, including states like Utah. I think Utah was one. Um, so that's one thing we can do. Senator uh, Larson from Milwaukee, anyone here from Milwaukee? Uh, Chris Larson in Milwaukee uh, has drafted a, a campaign finance reform package that he introduced uh, a couple weeks ago in the Capitol, and I was there for the press conference, and his uh, whole package would, would erase a lot of the bad things that happened in that 2015 rewrite of the campaign finance law. Melissa Sargent, Representative Melissa Sargent here in Madison, for those of you uh, who have her as an elected official, she's also introduced uh, legislation that would ban corporations from, from giving to political parties and legislative campaign committees and require disclosure. So, uh, there are several legislators who've been working on this angle. And then nationally, there is an effort to amend the U.S. Constitution, to overturn Citizens United. Citizens United, I said, a shorthand for 140 years of bad U.S. Supreme Court decisions. Overturning Citizens United is shorthand for we're going to get our democracy away from the super rich and the corporations. And so this effort is to amend the U.S. Constitution to proclaim once and for all that corporations actually aren't persons and money actually isn't speech. And so in Wisconsin, we're one of the leaders of this movement. In 142 communities in Wisconsin, people have voted by overwhelming margins that they want to, and they want to overturn Citizens United. They want to proclaim that corporations aren't persons, money's not speech. And this thing passes almost all the time by overwhelming percentages. In, in Red Waukesha, it passed by 68, 69%. In Monona, it passed by 91%. In Minocqua, it passed by 91%. People want to get a fair system that's not dominated by the rich and corporations. People also want fair maps and no gerrymandering and all that. That's another big movement that's going on. And something like 19 states have passed uh, resolutions that they want to overturn Citizens United, they want to amend the U.S. Constitution. This is a movement, I think, that is going to succeed in the next 10 or 15 years, that we're actually going to amend the U.S. Constitution. Uh, the other way is to get a better, better members on the U.S. Supreme Court who will overturn a lot of these bad decisions, but, I, but that's not the fundamental fix, because you can always get different U.S. Supreme Court justices who will rule the other way. The real fundamental fix is to amend that Constitution and say really only Flesh and blood human beings should have constitutional rights because uh, 
you know, we have these corporations that are just running the show. So that's basically my story about how our system doesn't really work. Our campaign finance system doesn't work for the vast majority of people in this country. Bernie Sanders has been an exception with his $27 average contribution from people who are his supporters. So there is a way around it if you can um, rally massive numbers of people to give you small donor uh, amounts. But typically, the candidate who is either super rich himself or herself, like Herb Cole, uh, or the candidate who can appeal to Wall Street, like Barack Obama did, he got a ton of money from Wall Street, or you know, suck up to other super rich people and, and corporate uh, donors to third party groups, uh, otherwise you're out of luck. Um, I'm hoping the Sanders example will take hold with other candidates who are able to galvanize support at the grassroots and get a lot, like millions of small donors. But uh, other than that, it's just a game played by the rich for the rich, played by the corporations for the corporations. And that's why our system doesn't work once you get to Washington. Uh, there's this study by a Princeton professor and Northwestern professor, Gillens and Page. Uh, they looked at almost 1,800 policy decisions over a two decade period. This was even before Citizens United. And what they found was that when the citizens of this country want something, they don't get it. By and large, we don't get what we want. The only time we really get what we want is when the business community wants it too, or when the 1% wants it too, then, then we can get it. But otherwise, the system just doesn't work. We don't have a functioning democracy in the country. That's the bottom line. And we don't really have a really good functioning, well-functioning uh, system here in Wisconsin either. So that's the problem. I've outlined a solution or two. It's gonna take a lot of grassroots work. Uh, there are a lot of groups working on this other than the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign, and I know all of you, and I salute all of you for being engaged in the community. Uh, there are a lot of good groups working on this angle. There's the League of Women Voters of Wisconsin. There's Common Cause in Wisconsin. Uh, there's Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Uh, there are a lot of groups working this campaign finance issue. And by and large, we're working together. I was on a phone call at 11 today, every other, win every other Friday at 11. Uh, we have a conference call with all these different groups uh, meeting together and discussing what's going on in the budget, what's going on in other pieces of legislation, who's having a press conference, who's going to speak at the press conference, who's going to write the op-ed commentary, et cetera. We're working together uh, in the nonprofit progressive community in Wisconsin, which is an exciting thing from where I stand because it used to be you'd have the environmental groups here, you'd have the clean government groups here, you'd have ACLU here, you'd have LGBT groups here. and you know, everyone was fighting for the same dollars from the same rich philanthropists and, and weren't working together. And so we're working together now, which is hopeful. But, so I'll take some questions. I don't want to talk all day. And, uh, and then uh, we can go outside in the nice sun. Questions?